In a previous video, I showed this modified switch list and these bills of lading that I would use to create operations on my layout. I wouldn't uh, use car numbers. I would just simply say I was going to pick up one hopper in an industry, drop off five boxcars at another. I shied away from car cards. But a friend of mine was recently on the Penn Central Railroad Online site and in their operations library found a picture of a prototype Penn Central car movement card. I like the look of it quite a bit and it made me think I should give car cards a try. So I made my own version on Word and went to an office supply store and had several printed up. Since then, I've been filling out a card for every freight car on my layout, and I'm putting it in this box that represents William's yard. Not having a large yard on my layout, I create my trains and stage them manually. Uh, when I'm ready to create a train, I pull a number of cards out of the deck, put them in the front pocket. That represents the train. Here they are all fanned out. There are 13 cards for this train. Nothing magic about that number, but I thought I'd grab a bunch. So then I create the train by hand, stage it, and then hook up the power and push it into staging. The staged cars are all set outs, but I'm also going to make pickups. You can see those little green boxes on the fascia. Some of them have cards. These represent cars that need to be picked up. They're either at uh, local industries or like these three cars are at an interchange track. This is the Kingsport and Western interchange track and here is the box for the interchange track that has cards for each of the three cars there. Likewise at the Gulf uh, facility on the river there are tank cars and there is a box near the industry that has cards for those cars to be picked up. Before I run a train I take all the information about pickups and setouts from the car movement cards and I transfer that to a switch list. Switch lists are easy ways to operate. You just follow the columns going down with the industries on the right side and you know what to set out and what to pick up as you go. I also take the car cards with me though because I want to be able to drop the set out cards in the boxes for each industry and I'll talk about that a little more later. Carrying both cards and switch lists was kind of inconvenient so I made a special clipboard with a box glued to it to accommodate the cards. When I need to have hands-on for throttle and uncoupling, I hang the clipboard on hooks along the fascia. Well, let's run a train and I'll show you how this works. Our freight today will be uh, led by a pair of RSD-12s. The first stop will be at Blue Ribbon Flower. They have to drop off two cars. And the next stop is Battaglia Brothers Warehouse, where they'll be dropping two other cars. Here are the cards for those four freight cars. Blue Ribbon and Battaglia Brothers Warehouse occupy the same siding, so as our train comes out, it'll cut the four cars and push them into the siding occupied by both industries under this underpass. Here's Blue Ribbon Flower. The cards for the freight cars going to Blue Ribbon are placed in Blue Ribbon's box and they're turned around to show where the car is headed next. In this case, the loaded hopper is going to Hostess Wonder Bread in Empire City. Here's Battaglia Brothers Warehouse. The two cars there are dropped off and the two cards for those cars are placed in the box showing where they're going to go next. The TPFX box car is going to Universal Millwork in Empire City next. Our locomotives return, hook back onto the train, and the next work is to make pickups. There are three at the Kingsport and Western Interchange track. Here are those box cars. And here's the box with the cards for the three cars. The train picks up the three KP and W cars, and after doing that, the corresponding cards for those cars will be picked up and placed in the box on the clipboard. After that, this train's ready to roll out of town for some more work. Well, our next bit of work is at Hedberg Aggregates, and if you look at the switch list, you can see that there are two New York Central cars that are going to be set out there. Those are open hopper cars. Hedberg's is at Marion, New York. It's at the summit of my layout. There's a tank car there that needs to stay there. It's loaded with machine lubricant. There's Hedberg's box. And, uh, you can see Hedberg in the background at the top. 
The paper clip on the card is for that tank car. I indicate that a car needs to be held by putting a paper clip on it. We're not going to move the tanker. We're just going to drop off two hoppers. Here comes the train. Cuts off the two hoppers and sets them off at Hedberg. And then leaves for the next job. When I set out the cars at Hedberg, I place their car cards in the box. And again, I flip them around. Uh, here you can see that on the other side, those cars are destined for Mayfield Yard. Well, I think you get the idea, so I'll just show uh, one more stop, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, the next bit of business is at the Gulf River facility. We need to pull five tank cars that are loaded and set out a 50-foot box car that has mechanical supplies for their pumps. Here are the tank cars at Gulf being pulled out past Volstead's Tavern and, as always, blocking traffic at Ulster Avenue. The 50-foot boxcar is later set out. I pull the cards for the tank cars, and I leave the card for the 50-foot boxcar flipped around showing what its next destination is. Well, I thought it might be nice to actually have some moving video of a train before we stop. Uh, the train presumably has done all of its work as far as West Mill, and then makes the return trip back to Kingsport. Here it is rolling by Hedberg aggregates. Some of the industries at Kingsport had facing sidings. Uh, now that the train is heading back, those will be trailing sidings and easier to switch. So there's my experiment with uh, Penn Central car movement cards. I, I'm liking this so far and I'll probably keep it going. As always, thanks for watching.